Excellency Mr. Nobuteru Ishihara, Minister of Environment of Japan, Dr. Pachauri, Chairman of the IPCC, Drs. Field and Barosh, Co-Chairs of Working Group 2, Mr. Achim Steiner, the Executive Director of the United Nations Environment Program, Ms. Christiana Figueres, Executive Secretary of the UNFCCC, Ms. Renate Christ, the Secretary of the IPCC. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the WMO, one of the two co-sponsoring organizations of the IPCC, I wish to welcome you to this session of Working Group 2. You have before you the important task to approve and accept one of the critical parts of the IPCC's fifth assessment report, one deals that deals with impacts, adaptation, and vulnerability. There is no doubt that this report, as all the products of the IPCC, will contribute enormously to the understanding of climate change and to the development of mitigation and adaptation policies. The intergovernmental nature of the IPCC the formal process of approval of its reports by the member states of the UN give to it a UN unique credibility and provide the strongest basis for policymakers to make their decisions. This has been confirmed again and again by the UNFCCC, the main mechanism for negotiating global action on climate change. With every assessment cycle, confidence increases in the science and in the ability of scientists to better understand human influence on the climate system and how climate change, in turn, impacts human activities. This report confirms that without urgent and ambitious action to reduce emissions over the coming decades, climate change will have increasingly serious impacts on society. Only six months have passed since the successful launch of the report of Working Group 1. That report has responded to the high expectations and already contributed a great deal to the deepening of the understanding of the physical science basis of climate change. I am pleased to note that its dissemination, first of all to the 19th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the UNFCCC in Warsaw last year, is having very high resonance around the globe. I am confident that the report of Working Group 2 will be as equally effective in disseminating the assessments on impacts, vulnerability, exposure, future risks, and potential benefits for adaptation, and also in making this critical information accessible to all. This report is the product of years of intensive work, and I want to pay my special respect to the commitment and dedication of thousands of scientists who have made it possible to reach the stage of approval. You have worked tirelessly and without any compensation than the pride of participating in a historic undertaking that has tremendous impact on the way climate change is understood and addressed. I am grateful also to the WMO members who continue to believe in and support the activities of the IPCC and to UNEP for its critical contribution to the success of the IPCC. There are elements in the report that are of particular interest to WMO and its programs, in particular how climate impacts are expected to vary from region to region and to evolve over the coming decades. This will provide invaluable guidance on how we can reduce climate vulnerabilities and adapt to the consequences of greenhouse gas emissions. The next step is to operationalize some of the climate research assessed by the IPCC by transforming it into practical and actionable information. Working together, national hydrological and meteorological services and other organizations working at national, regional and global level will deliver increasingly sophisticated decision support services aimed at building climate resilience, adapting to new conditions, and mitigating certain emissions. This is what the United Nations system's aims is to achieve through the global framework for climate services. The challenges are enormous. 
some 70 countries in the world, especially in Africa, are lacking the resources and the expertise to deliver and even to use climate information. You have in your midst some permanent representative or some of these countries in this meeting. However, enormous are also the opportunities and the benefits climate services can render to strengthen our climate resilience. WMO is committed to disseminating the IPCC's assessments as widely as is possible at all levels of policy making, among other partners and within the wider public. WMO is proud for what the IPCC stands for and what it has delivered over the 25 years since its establishment as a panel. And we will continue to support it into the future with resources and in particular to ensure its unique contribution to this very important aspect of understanding the Earth system into the future. Thank you very much for your kind attention.